Guys, welcome to the first episode of Full Scale Garage. Today we're going to be working on my 69 Baja project and we're going to be installing thing front spindles and arms onto the beam. The advantage of this is it is a three inch lift and the arms themselves are a little bit stronger. So let's get into it. Start by putting the ball joints in the trailing arms. The longer one for a thing goes on the top and the shorter one goes on the bottom. On air-cooled Volkswagens, to put ball joints in, you'll have two notches on the ball joints and there'd be a notch cut out onto the trailing arm and you just line those up. I'm going to start taking off the brake assembly and take off the spindle. Now on Volkswagens, they have a speedo cable that runs to the spindle, so you're going to need to take off this e-clip and use just a hook tool then just pry it out. Once you remove the e-clip you can take off the dust cover either you can use dust cover pliers if not you can use a flathead screwdriver and a mallet and just tap it around. I already loosened it so it will pop right off. Then we're going to take off this spindle nut by using an allen key and a crescent wrench. On the driver's side the spindle nut is has reverse threads so instead of turning it counterclockwise you're going to turn it clockwise to loosen. Then you can you can pop out this washer but you can just move it the brake drum forward and pop it out and then the bearing will come out with it. Now you're going to want gloves because this is going to get really messy. Once you got the the washer and nut off, you can just slide the drum off. It might, if it's stuck, you can use a mallet and tap around it, and that should break it loose. You can take off this backing plate in the shoes by undoing these three bolts with a 15 millimeter socket. Off, we can start to take off the spindle by taking off the arms, the tie rod, and finally taking out the speedo cable. Start by removing the tie rod by taking off the castle nut underneath. Then we're going to use a tie rod separator to pop it out of the spindle. Once you get the tie rod removed, you're going to take the spindle off by taking off these two nuts with a 19 millimeter socket. I'm just using a box wrench. Take off the nuts, there's going to be two washers, a big one and a small one. The small one goes on the bottom one, and the big one goes on the top. To take the ball joints out of the spindle, you're going to need to use a pickle fork, and then just hammer them out. You want to be careful with a pickle fork though because it tends to to rip the ball joint boots but since I'm I get have new ball joints because they're different I don't have to worry about that. Now we're going to use a crescent wrench and an 8mm allen head socket. We're going to remove these nuts and the, the bolts to remove the trailing arms. Can just slide out the trailing arms and you want you want to be wearing gloves because there's going to be a lot of grease when you pull it out but like i said you just slide it out and then set it somewhere where it won't make a mess and then do the same with the bottom one you're going to notice the two fittings here for a grease gun you're going to want to remember those because we're going to use those later it's going to slide in the new torsion arms. The one with the shock mount is for the bottom and then the other one's for the top. And just how you take it off, you're going to line it up with the springs and just slide it in. And then you do the same for the top. Might have to move it a little bit to get it lined up. Now we're going to hook up our grease gun to these fittings and give them about like five or six pumps each. Let's 
כן. Or until it comes out. Wipe off the excess. Now I like, I'm also going to slide it out a bit and then put more grease on the end. So there's more grease on the arm. So let's pull the arms out again. Put like a little bit of grease on each arm. That one pump should be good. And I'm going to move it around and then spread it all through the arm. And then do it on both arms. And then your arm should be good. And then I would recommend changing your gloves so you don't get everything messy. That, you can slide the arms back in. You might need to mess with it until you get the springs lined up. Like that. And then do that. And now you can reinstall the the bolt and the security nut into that hold the trailing arm on. Start by putting on the spindles. I'm going to start with the top, and then you want well, the top. The on the top, this eccentric nut goes on, and this is what controls the camber. So you're going to slide both of those on, and then get the big washer, and then the nylock nut that came with the ball joint, and we're just going to hand tight, put it on hand tight. Just like that. Keep the ball joints in and the nuts loosely fastened. You're going to want to take a f jack and either a chain or or ratchet strap and r ratchet the strap to the jack and a strong point on the car so you can actually turn the springs instead of lifting the entire car. Then you want to get it about right height or level and then you're going to tighten the nuts completely. Done that, you can reattach the tie rod. Then we're going to do the brakes after that. The brakes are just going to press it on till to hold it and then we're going to line it up with the three bolt holes then we're going to use an impact on these bolts because you don't want your brakes falling off so I'm going to go do that once we got the brake assembly on we can slide on the brake drum it might should just if anything use like a soft mallet and tap it on We're going to put on the spindle nut and remember the driver's side is left handed threaded that way so it turns reverse and they did that so it doesn't uh, loosen when you're driving from the rotation of the wheel so you're going to want to tighten that all the way down and then use an allen key to tighten it. Next, next you're going to normally be pushing the speedo cable back through but I'm going to have to replace it later anyway so I'm just going to leave it out then tap your dust cap back on just a light tap all it needs and then you'd put your your speedo cable would go through here and that's where you'd put your e-clip now you can put the wheel on that she's done like I said I'll give you a three inch lift so instead of before with factory being in line with the bottom of the door now it's three inches above. Look at all that ground clearance.